Hello and uh, welcome to the 150th Lucosa Retro Game Review video. I can scarcely believe that I've done 150 of these things. Nevertheless I have and I suspect I'm going to be doing many more. But as this is uh, video 150, I figured that uh, I would do a, uh, a fairly major title for whichever computer I was uh, reviewing at the time. So I've chosen uh, the uh, Microprose uh, Formula 1 Grand Prix for the Amiga by Jeff Crammond, the game that uh, many people consider to be Jeff Crammond's uh, masterpiece um, as far as his uh, Amiga titles go. And you'd be hard pressed to uh, argue against that. And it, yeah, I, mean, I don't know anybody who had an Amiga who did not have this game. It, it was a huge seller, uh, deservedly so, really. Anyway, let's get uh, get onto the main menu. Now the game is not without its flaws. Um, not least the fact that uh, if you start the game with the full intro disc um, the music is I mean, obviously you know it's a, it's a British made game of Formula 1 so you know what the uh, uh, you know the main music is going to be. Unfortunately whoever uh, decided to, to do the music for this game had obviously never heard The Chain by Fleetwood Mac because aside from the bass line when it starts it sounds absolutely fuck all like it. Uh, it's In fact it is cringingly awful. I remember thinking that at the time let alone now. So yeah they, it didn't get off to a great start. But that aside, everything else is pretty much fine. Um, so, uh, this game does actually feature a number of, well, features that I have never seen on any PC Formula 1 game by either EA or uh, Codemasters, who are the current lot who have the license. And I cannot for the life of me see why they're not in it, because, well, they're in this. So if they're in this, surely it can be done now. Though, I mean, if you look at uh, Elite Dangerous, you'll see that, you know, clearly a lot of features that were possible on the Amiga and even on the Commodore 64 are impossible today. That must be the case. So anyway, uh, you can start with your driver and team selection and uh, straight away you'll notice another problem that I have with this game. Now I'm assuming this was done because of uh, licensing issues. Maybe uh, Jeff Crammond or Microprose or whoever couldn't get the uh, licenses to use the proper team names or the actual driver names so they're all completely made up they have the right uh, liveries and the drivers have the right uh, crash helmet designs so if you knew the team and the liveries from the 1991 season then you would be able to change it all because the game does allow you to uh, change the you, know, you can edit team name you can change driver name so it, you can completely change it all around and actually turn it into the proper teams and names that uh, you know were in the 91 season um, now obviously McPherson Alpha is actually supposed to be uh, McLaren Honda uh, driver number one it should be Ayrton, Ayrton Senna. Driver two should be uh, Gerhard Berger. But, uh, oh well. Uh, the, the five here, which is in yellow, for Team Puma, who are, of course, uh, Williams. Uh, I think they were Williams-Renault in 91. And uh, 
of course, for Williams in 1991, their number one driver was Nigel Mansell. The number two driver, who's racing as car six, was Ricardo Petrezzi. And, um, yeah, you are selected as, uh, as Nigel Mansell. You can deselect it. And then, um, if you do a race with no drivers selected, then you just watch the the drivers do their thing. So, um, <coughs> uh, there are plenty, I mean, you can see how many teams there were in uh, the 91 season. So, we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10... 12, 14, 16. So we have 18 teams, and there were 35 cars, because two of those teams, one was the uh, Fond Metal uh, team, uh, who were not this lot. This was the Colony uh, team. Uh, so Fond Metal must be team uh, f number 14 here, yeah. Yeah, their driver was Olivier Griard. Uh, I can't remember who drove for Colony. Um, but uh, with 35 cars uh, entered and only 26 spaces on the grid so in these days you had pre-qualifying to see just who was going to actually be able to take part in the race qualifying and it meant that in 91 there were a lot of people who were saying oh there are too many teams in Formula 1 which is you know the polar opposite of what we've got now where it's not enough teams no, nowhere near enough and it looks like the number of uh, teams is going to drop further so anyway uh, so we are going to be racing as Nigel Mansell or whatever his fucking name is in this Robert Davies I think for Williams or Puma as they are here so uh, you know, uh, one driver selected single player you can theoretically have up to 26 players in this game and uh, the way it works uh, the multiplayer I think it works extremely well um, if we go to the game options menu and uh, race options uh, no it's not there we'll come back to that in a sec if we go to uh, right, game options and number of turns per player in multiplayer mode so uh, you change that to um we'll whenever i used to play this back in the day uh, my mates would come over there would be about four of us and we would change it so we had three uh turns uh per game and how it would work is one of you would be playing and the computer would control the other player's cars then it would switch over to the next player and then he would drive his car for a bit while the computer controlled the other two players cars and so on and so on and it works really well and because uh, this was back in the time when uh, you know social gaming like that really was social gaming rather than you know having to do it entirely online and put up with cunts who think it's hilarious to drive around uh, in the wrong direction and smash into everyone's car so uh yeah it, it just meant that multiplayer uh racing in these days actually was enjoyable which it certainly is not now uh, the other options were uh, the race options these are pretty self-explanatory so you practice uh periods you can have it at the up to the maximum which i believe is uh 90 minutes um I will certainly not do that for the sake of this video because it means it will go on for a fucking eternity. Uh, 15 minutes for a qualifying period. That's a, that's a, okay, you can't drop it down any lower than 15 minutes. And uh, race distance, again, I don't think, yeah, you can't drop it down any lower than 10. Uh, we'll actually drop it or increase it a bit to 15. So you have separate race and car qualifying setups depending on how you know authentic uh, simulation you want. Uh, for this, I'll do no. I'm gonna. I'm basically gonna be playing this like an arcade game. Uh, opposition standard will have a rookie. Uh, as you can see, there are all kinds of uh, levels there. We'll have the 90, 91 levels. Uh, if you have them all the same, I mean, it is as it sounds. 
all drivers race identically well so if you can pass one you can pass them all if you're having trouble overtaking one you're going to have trouble overtaking everybody and random is a bit ridiculous because you can have someone racing supremely well at one circuit and then the next circuit he's so shit he can't even make pre-qualifying so it's a bit crazy right so let's head back to the main menu Right now, uh, your help options. Uh, again, for the sake of this video, I'm going to have all them all of them on just to make it easier to play the game. So you can have uh, auto brakes, auto gears, uh, self-writing spins. Uh, you can make yourself indestructible, and it can show you the best line. Uh, if you are not playing with auto gears, then you can also have the suggested gear, so that 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 then just appears, and you can then quickly change, usually change down to uh, get uh, the best gear for going around that corner. Then you have the uh, practice on any circuit, uh, a non-championship race, or you can start a championship season. For the sake of this video, we're just going to do a single non-championship race, which means we get to choose any of the circuits. So, uh, here we are. So there were 16 races in uh, the 91 season, which was the norm, as opposed to the, you know, the ridiculous amount they have now, where 19 is considered low. I think next season we've got 21 races, which is just fucking insane. So uh, it starts off with uh, the uh, United States Grand Prix, which in 91 was the Phoenix Grand Prix, which was an utterly appalling circuit and it was just horrendous nobody liked it and um yeah thankfully it got dropped i think 92 was the last time it was run of course we still have the san marino grand prix at imola in uh, this uh yeah, back in 91 it wasn't until 94 that san marino became more infamous uh we have the uh, mexico grand prix uh before it all got altered for the race that was, you know, just last season, or last season, last week. Uh, the French Grand Prix was still on the calendar, uh, and uh, of course, classics like Belgium was there, uh, Italy, of course. Uh, the Portuguese Grand Prix was still on the calendar there. Spain was a lot later than uh, it is now. Uh, Japan was. Uh, at Suzuka then, and Australia was at uh, Adelaide. It was a much better race than the uh, Melbourne uh, circuit they use now. But uh, for this one, we are going to do Germany. There's a very good reason for it. Um, once you select it, you then get a picture showing you the circuit. And look at that. Proper Hockenheim. pre Hermann Tilke butchery this is the uh, circuit that has the the uh, ride through the forests before returning uh, into the stadium complex uh, it was just so much better than than you know the the god awful version that uh, is at Hockenheim now thanks to uh, thanks to fucking Herman Tilker who does nothing to improve formula 1 at all so, uh, you can bring up the info, as you know, you'll see there. So, uh, qualifying lap record was uh, uh, Nigel Mansell's in the Williams. And the race lap record was Ricardo Patrese, of all people. Uh, again in the Williams, 1 minute 43.569. Uh, you may hear some fucking fireworks going off in the uh, background. I'll try my best to ignore them. So anyway, let's uh, get on with uh, this uh, particular race. Right, so uh, we shall start with... Uh, well, well, we'll do a free practice. Uh, so let's uh, get on with that. Now, of course, this is using 1991 rules, so your tyre choice consisted of the compounds A, B, C or D. I'm going to go with D, which is the softest compound. You could use any of them. 
Then there's the qualifying compound, which is obviously for the qualifying, shock horror, and then the wets. And that was it. But also in 91, there was no pit lane speed limit. You could tear out, as you can see, I'm doing 91, 93, and I'm still in the pit lane. So this was before the times when uh, the FIA were obsessed with uh, basically uh, you know, trying to make Formula 1 safe to a, well, ridiculous levels, which uh, it's never going to manage. And, you, know, you can't have that much safety in a sport where you're driving a car at getting on for 200 mile an hour. But uh, the FIA don't seem to, you know, want to acknowledge that point. So, um, here we are then racing through the uh, proper Hockenheim circuit. Because all this section that I'm on now isn't there anymore. So we are uh, it's still heading through the... Uh, uh, forest. We're now uh, heading back the other way, heading towards the uh, stadium complex. We have one more uh, chicane to negotiate, which I fucked up. Just got away with that. <laughs> now, as far as uh, the uh, stateless panel here, uh, now the uh, steering wheel and the rev counter are pretty obvious. Below the rev counter that's all of the uh, driver aids again so you can actually enable them or disable them while you are racing. So F1 is the auto brakes, F2 uh, is for auto gears, F3 is the self writing uh, ability, F4 is the uh, indestructible mode on or off, F5 shows you the uh, guiding line and F6 which is currently off is the uh, one to show you uh, the suggested gear. Maybe that's off because I don't need it because I'm using the uh, auto, uh, uh, auto gears. Now um, on the other side of the steering wheel, if you look on the left hand side, there's uh, a row of five lights with the bottom one actually lit. That's the one that shows you uh, the um, skill level of the uh, other drivers, because I've got it on rookie, which is the lowest, so only the first light shows. I can't remember what the uh, green line shows, actually I think I just remembered that's the line that shows you that uh, you are racing them at 1991 settings. If it was random it would be a uh, sort of zigzaggy line and if it's all the same then the line would just be horizontal. On the other side uh, the green light shows you that you are controlling the car. If it's going to change, it starts blinking yellow and then it goes red when the computer has taken control of it and then it's about to change over to the next player. So that only does something in uh, multiplayer mode. I can't for the life of me remember what the two green arrows uh, mean, which is underneath that uh, green light. The next one underneath that is uh, the damage indicator, so uh, if you damage the front or rear wing or any of your tyres, that will then uh, show you. And the one below that is the pit lane indicator. Now if you want to enter the pit lane, you press enter, it's now showing as yellow. And that means that when you reach the pit lane, you will enter the pit lane as opposed to just driving straight past it. I really like that feature, I much prefer it to the features that are in the current Codemasters uh, Formula 1 games where you just steer into the uh, pit lane and um, hope for the best. Uh, I don't like that at all. So this, this, this uh, one of uh, being able to notify the pit lane that you're coming in 
uh, I think is a lot better. So you can see, uh, graphically, it's it's pretty fast. Um, I mean, bring in mind that I'm playing this on a uh, a one meg uh, Amiga 500. There's another car in front of me. I can't quite see what it is. It looks like it's a Minardi. I fucked up that chitane again, so I can't really see. Let's have a look as we uh, go past it. Uh, no, that's not a Minardi. That might actually be the uh, Coloni uh, car that I mentioned before, which uh, you know only has the one driver. But the more I look at it, I think it is the only other car that has a colour like that is the Benetton, but uh, that has quite a uh, noticeable uh, green section along the side, so you should be able to spot the difference. Anyway, um, so here you can see that uh, entering the pit lane. So, uh, now while you are in the pits, something you can do is view other cars. So here we have Jose Fernandez, whoever he is, car 31. Uh, I'm not sure what car he would be driving. And then we have this guy here, uh, Christophe Pascal, French name, he could be an Elysier. Uh, Enzo D'Angelo, I, I don't know who these drivers are supposed to be. Now, Mario Innocenti, I know it's supposed to be Jolla Lacey, so this is in a uh, Tyrrell. And, uh, yeah, quite how they got from Jolla Lacey to Mario Innocenti, I don't know, but that's how it is. Henri Latour, clearly another Frenchman, so he could be in the uh, Ligier, he could also be in the La Russe. Uh, Nico Napoli, no idea who he is. Uh, Pietro Rossellini, no idea who he's supposed to be. Paolo Giantil, uh, so you got all these stupid names. Helmut Becker is clearly meant to be German, but it's not... Uh, uh, bloody uh, Gerhard Berger. That car in front looks like a Ferrari, but I'm pretty sure it's not. That's almost certainly the Dallara. Uh, this is actually Ricardo Patrese, supposedly, who we are racing with. The ABC Patrese overtaking, so this is who Claudio Vincenzo is meant to be. He's racing the Dalli, uh, Dallara. Now this bloke in car 35, I'm fairly sure, is in the Lamborghini Formula 1. I wonder how many people remember the Lamborghini Formula 1 team. It was rather short-lived because they were utter crap and they failed to qualify for a single Grand Prix. So we uh, keep going through uh, various ones until we go back to uh, us. Now that's another feature, being able to see the cockpit and if I could remember the keys you could also watch the uh, external views of all the other drivers and that feature has also not as far as I'm aware appeared in any uh, Codemasters or EA Formula 1 game. Why not? They could do it on an Amiga, why couldn't they do it on a, you know, why can't they do it on a PC game? Answer, they can't be asked. Anyway, um, free practice I was hoping would be over by now. And I've got no way of being able to tell uh, when it ends or when it's due to end. Which is annoying. Maybe I shouldn't have made pre free practice uh, any longer. I'm sure I'm cl it's almost over. Because I think I said it the 10 minutes. So... Well, let's do another, actually do something, you know, while we're uh, waiting for uh, the uh, free practice to actually end. During qualifying you can accelerate time, but 
I can't remember how, in fact, I think if we press escape we can skip the rest of this session. Oh, bollocks, it keeps fucking doing this. It's wanting, to, wanting me to insert disc 3. I have inserted disc 3. Notice, look, Micro Formula 1 uh, Grand Prix Disc 3, and it used it when uh, the game started. Right, well, let's put Disc 3 here then. Right, now, retry. Oh, fuck, oh, look, yeah, there we go, right, so, it's finally started again. Uh, there's a Benetton there, um, so right, well we can leave practice. Now if I could remember which uh, number the Benetton uh, team was, I would definitely be uh, going uh, in one of their cars. I always like the Benettons, uh, especially the B189 and the 190. I liked the uh, delivery on them, and they had a great driver in Nelson Piquet of course. Right. So, uh, let's uh, get qualifying underway. So, you can see the tyre choice. Q is selected. Now, as I was saying, uh, the game isn't flawless. Um, it does slow down a bit when there's a lot on screen. But when you consider the amount that is on screen, you can't complain too much about it. Uh, it looks like it's using fielding vectors, but I'm open to correction on that. Um, they did take some shortcuts though, uh, if you uh, look at the um, uh, the Leighton House car, the uh, livery on that is sky blue, the exact same sky blue that the sky is in this game. And if there is then a wet race, the sky turns grey, um, yeah so does the Leighton House car. That's uh, not so good. So qualifying is, uh, say, 15 minutes. So what I shall do is head out here. I'll do one uh, qualifying lap. Head straight back into the pits. What we, what I used to do back here in the day when I was, uh, when I'd be playing this with uh, my mates and that, say there was about four of us. Um, we used to set our own rule which was you could have one qualifying lap and that was it. And of course we did that just pissing about. And then of course a few years later the FIA actually introduced that rule as the qualifying rule in Formula 1. Um, and in this season in 91 they still had the uh, regular rule which I always preferred and I think they should still be using it now which was quite simply you had an hour go out there do your fastest lap and that's it none of this pouncing about with oh after so many minutes the bottom five drop out then so many more minutes and the next five drop out and all this but just give them an hour and tell them right off you go what could be simpler than that why bother changing it but yes, in between now and uh, with this uh, era and now, they did have this ridiculous uh, rule where drivers were allowed to go out there and have one lap, which meant that uh, if other people were, uh, you know, had gone out, uh, did their one lap, uh, because you had to do it in order, you had to do it in car number order, if it then started raining, tough shit you still got just your one lap and there was one instance where uh, one driver had just started his flying lap and it then absolutely pissed out so he was out there in torrential rain on slick tires he took something like about four minutes to do a lap and the FIA said well there you go that's your time it was just fucking laughable so thankfully that got changed and that's when they then brought in this uh, current setup we we're using. Except uh, first, the first year, I'm sure many of you will remember the first year because uh, if you're Formula One fans, I'm sure you haven't been watching it for you know so little a time. 
But yes, the first year that they did it, the third and final qualifying session was ridiculously convoluted, where you had to go around and average a certain amount of uh, a certain time in your lap, so then you would get your fuel credits back and all this fucking bullshit. And yeah, thankfully that got dropped the following season. So we're about to uh, set um, the uh, pole position time. There we go, so 1 minute 42.667 uh, which has us in position 1 as you can also see the pit lane uh, entrance light is uh, lit because uh, we only need to do the one flying lap I mean you can just hit enter and all oh, yellow flags are waving someone's gone off in front of us Whoa, there, there's a uh, <laughs> that's a late in the house I just ploughed into uh, it looks like a LaRousse is in front of me as well, and I think I saw a Jordan, the green car. Oh no, there's a second Leighton House in front of us there. Uh, who else is around there with them? Alright, so that's the Leighton House there. I can't get past her at the moment. Uh, can't see who that is. That might be a Lotus, I think. A white and green finish. And that is definitely a LaRousse in front of the Lotus. Now, the LaRousse uh, was a team that were particularly infamous uh, back in the day when I was uh, playing this with me, with me mates and that. For some reason, the LaRousse, which became nicknames the Weaving LaRousse of Death, um, was a real bastard to try and uh, lap. Uh, the AI is a bit basic, they don't move off the racing line, so if you're lapping a car, you've got to come off the racing line to pass them. They won't move out the way for you. Thankfully, by the time... Uh, Grand Prix 2 came along, I think that got changed and they did move off the racing line to let you through. So, uh, well, anyway, this, this is done. It's a good job I had the indestructible mode on because when I ploughed into the back of that latent house, um, yeah, I wouldn't have done myself too many favours. I did the latent house car even less favours. <laughs> They're not indestructible, I am. So with uh, that lap in, in the bank, let's see how we compare to everyone else. So I am more than 9 seconds faster than the second place car, who is uh, Gerhard Berger. And I am almost 10 seconds faster than Ayrton Senna. There you go. There's 8 minutes to go, but we can uh, put the accelerated time on. So, um, I mean, we might as well get the review uh, going. Graphically, it's fantastic. I mean, you know, for an Amiga 500, you couldn't ask for more. Uh, well, you could, but you would be outrageous to, you know, ask for and expect more than this. It's absolutely, you know, fantastic. You cannot fault it, with the possible exception of that shortcut they made with the uh, Leighton House... Uh, changing its colour depending on the weather of the uh, race. Uh, sound. Um, I, I mean, okay, you can't really do a great deal with the sound. It's, it's uh, an engine revving, but um, I mean, there are a lot of games, Stunt Car Racer, where the uh, engine sound is unbearably annoying. In this, it's perfectly fine, so I've got no issues with the uh, engine sound. The sound is great. Um, I say the intro music uh, it was clearly done by somebody who has never heard the chain and is embarrassingly awful. And... Um, so yeah, I mean, sound is, is fine without being remarkable, uh, apart from the music. 
which is diabolical in the extreme. And the gameplay, the gameplay is fucking fantastic. Uh, it's, you know, you can make it as simple or as complicated as you like. So we get the final uh, uh, grid. So I am on pole position with old Luigi Rivellini. Oh, I remember him. What a great driver he was. Mind you, I can't complain too much because uh, when um, me and my mates were racing, it was I mean the season was called season bollocks, and uh, the uh, the teams. I think just about every team had their engine supplied by cunt flaps and uh, you know I, th I think I I raced for uh, team bollocks and uh, yeah y y you get the idea so uh, and and the drivers I mean, we had all kinds of fucking bollocks names and that but you know at least it, it gave us the chance to do it and we did it so you know So anyway, uh, going back to uh, the review, um, and I'm not going to bother with the pre-race practice, but during the uh, uh, pre-race practice and during qualifying, you can adjust your car setup uh, as much or as little as you want. Um, it shows you the uh, uh, thing again. We don't need to uh, look at that. So here we go with the actual race. lights and we get off to quite a slow start usually uh, I haven't got off to a great start here either yep it looks like I'm being passed by uh, Tracy and by the McLaren uh, but I'll just nudge uh, that's it instead of in front of me I'll just nudge him out of the way except I failed so I'm down the third uh, I've got Gerhard Berger right behind me uh, so we're past Patrese and uh, I'm pretty close to a passing uh, Senna, there we go, so I'm now in position one and sadly that's probably all the overtaking we're going to see until it comes to me lapping back markers there's seven laps of this race <laughs> this is why I kept putting off doing uh, this review uh, it's not that I don't like doing reviews of games that can take a long time to play. I mean, fuck you know, I reviewed Captain Blood not that long ago, so... But, um... It's possible to show everything, uh, uh, and, you know, just make a quick-ish video of it. Uh, but with this, that's not quite an option. It's also, that's the reason why I haven't done a review of Damocles, which I think is a fucking fantastic game, but is not very video friendly rather like this but, uh, well I'll, I'll keep I'll keep going but I'll finish the review while I'm doing it so I mean gameplay as I say is fantastic whether you want to use whether you want to play the game as an arcade racer which is pretty much how I am playing it at the moment I mean you can even change your view so you can see your car from behind and then it really is just like playing an arcade game uh, or you can make it, you know, a true simulator, changing the wings, changing tyre pressures, changing brake balance, changing uh, gear shift ratios. You, you can adjust everything uh, and make it, you know, a true out-and-out -out, um, simulator. Uh, I did used to try, you know, playing around with um, things like, you know, gears, uh, ratios and brake balance and all that. And um, I did get to the stage where I could go unbelievably fast and I always managed to destroy my engine. It would just explode because <laughs> it was just taking so much uh, punishment. So yeah, I could certainly squeeze every uh, bit of performance out of the engine but uh, I didn't do it any favours. I never finished the race because uh, the engine would blow up. And there are quite a few retirements because, I mean, bearing in mind this it was back at, at a time when uh, retirements from races was quite uh, common. Uh, a lot of the time, even though you had 26 runners, you would be lucky if 13 finished, uh, as opposed to today when, you know, four retirements is considered a lot. 
So as for score, oh, it's it's bloody close to perfect. It's it's not quite there um, for two reasons. The first is the horrendous music, as I keep going on about, but it, it really is fucking shit. The uh, the rendition of the chain. The other is that in racing, um, it is fairly easy for you to overtake any uh, car, whether you're you know, trying to overtake Olivier Griard in a Fon Matal, or if you're trying to overtake Ayrton Senna in a, a McLaren. They're all quite easy to overtake. Uh, that's the only fault I have with it, really. And that was a fault that was uh, corrected in Grand Prix 2. Uh, which I believe only came out for PC. I don't think that came out for the Amiga. But that that game was perfection for me. That is still the greatest uh, Formula One uh, simulator that has ever come out. But this is bloody close. Uh, how close? Well, I will give it 9.9 .9 out of 10. It's almost there. Um, but I mean. I just, I cannot see how anybody could rate this game lower than 9 out of 10 or, you know, or lower than 90% or whatever. Uh, the game is just, you know, it's, it is certainly uh, Jeff Crammon's uh, masterpiece on the Amiga and, you know, I don't know if he was ever, like, you know, smug or arrogant enough to almost, you know, be going around saying, yeah, I know, it's fucking brilliant. But he could have been. I mean, he, he could have gone around saying, yes, it's fucking fantastic. I know it is. Because it is. It's just... It blows away every other uh, Formula 1 simulator on the, the Amiga effortlessly. Nothing else comes close to it. So, um, I've had enough of this race and I've still got four laps to go, but uh, that uh, is uh, uh, Formula 1 Grand Prix then from Michael Pros, um, Jeff Cramon's greatest game on the uh, Amiga, it's, it's as simple as that, 9.9 .9 out of 10, I think again it's as simple as that. So, um, yeah, that's enough for me I think, so that brings... Uh, this video to an end as we are about to uh, start lap four and uh, yeah we shall see you at the next video